So the idea is to think about, yeah, essentially how can, a, how can an ad hoc group of amateurs um, at an event kind of meaningfully capture stuff in order to tell a story about it? And this was inspired by the fact that if you go to a gig or if you go to any event, instead of kind of lighters in the air, you just see phones up kind of recording everything everywhere nowadays. Um, and so, yeah, so the, the general idea is, can we use that? Can those people all contribute towards telling a story of an event en masse? So we start with a gig, and actually that's not such an interesting example. Um, because, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's only a certain number of perspectives you can have at a gig. So we started thinking about, well, what are some other events um, that might be more interesting to film? Um, and we thought about kind of sporting events like running races and marathons and cycling events, that kind of stuff. Anything that's, that's um, geographically distributed around a course. So um, something that it's going to be really hard to kind of capture in a lot of detail. Um, so if you think about something like the London Marathon, you've got a kind of 26 miles of course, um, and the BBC, for example, put an awful lot of effort into kind of deploying kind of camera equipment in order to cover it. So I think um, I read that they have uh, 51 high, de high definition cameras at various points around the course to produce this kind of interesting coverage. Um, now, interesting as something like the Nottingham Robin Hood Marathon is, it's not interesting or big enough for the BBC to turn up with all that equipment. But lots and lots of people turn up. So you have about 10,000 people turning up year on year. So you've got a lot of people kind of lining the route um, and potentially providing the opportunity to be kind of amateur camera operators. Um, and so essentially, if you've got these 10,000 people, wherever there's a spectator, there's a potential camera operator. We um, got a bunch of people to use our app and we can kind of collect this corpus of video. And all of our videos are um, have embedded metadata in them. Um, and so that's stuff like GPS um, to give you kind of the position on the course where, where the video was taken, the time it was taken. But then the application that we've made also allows people while they're filming to spot individual runners. So it's got this kind of keypad interface on it. So as somebody runs past, the spectator who's filming keys in the number of the runner that they've seen. And the reason we did it like this, because you, you might imagine kind of you know, computer science, we could do some kind of intelligent identification of runners, but actually it's a really, really hard problem to solve. You may be able to do it with computer vision, for example, so uh, have the camera actually read the bib number on somebody's chest, but in a really densely packed race, that's probably going to be obscured. So again, we're using the power of the crowd. So this is essentially human computation. We're using uh, the ability of people to recognise um, people that they know and easily be able to read partially obscured numbers and tap them in in order to again add uh, meaning to our collection of videos. Um, so thinking about the, the, the coverage that we got, so um, the first time we ran this uh, in the 2013 um, Robin Hood Marathon, uh, we had about 20 people using our app, which doesn't, doesn't seem very many, um, but between them they managed to tag um, two and a half thousand unique runner numbers um, throughout the course. So two and a half thousand people running in the race were tagged at least once over the course of the experiment. And between them they managed to film about 12 hours of footage. Um, so that's actually quite a significant amount of information a very small number of people have managed to capture. And you might imagine if we could scale that up. So even if just one percent of the spectators at the uh, at the marathon, so so 100 people um, were, were doing this, you might imagine we might be able to tag everybody in the marathon maybe a, maybe a couple of times. And that, that starts to become really interesting because then we can start um, pulling out videos of these people and telling stories about them or, or kind of presenting them maybe a kind of, this is your individual video souvenir of you running in the marathon. And that kind of sits alongside the kind of the official finish line race photography that you get. So this is me crossing the line. Maybe it'd be nice to say, here's me from a few angles captured by a bunch of kind of random people along, along the route. <coughs> um, so in terms of the, co the coverage that we've got, we started looking at the video corpus to see kind of, yeah, what did people do? And so one thing you might do is just say, 
well, let's kind of plot all the video on a map and see what that looks like. But actually that doesn't really help because if you think about it, there's like 6,000 people running a half marathon, for example. Um, and at any given point, you can kind of stand and watch the marathon going past for about half an hour. So we have to think about not just where a video took place, but when over the course of the marathon it took place. So if we draw a graph and on the left hand side, we draw the time and on the horizontal axis, we draw the distance along the course. And so essentially what we're doing is reducing our map to a single dimension. So saying that as you run the marathon, you, you, uh, you travel a distance. And along that line, there are a bunch of different key features. So in 2013, the route took you through Boots Campus and Boots are a large pharmaceutical company based in Nottingham. So the route took you through this kind of industrial estate and then onto kind of Nottingham University Park. And it did a switch back through there. So kind of up the road and then kind of back down past the lake. So it spent some time there before going back into town towards the finish line around the embankment by the riverside by the, uh, the, the Trent, Bridge. Trent Bridge. Yes, that's what I was uh, <laughs> struggling for. So essentially we can reduce any position on the course to somewhere on this line, both for the runners but also for the spectators who was kind of standing by the course filming it. First we can draw the marathon race on the graph and then we can kind of overlay what footage we have of that. In the top left hand corner, so at 9.30 at the start of the race, at the start line, the professional athletes are going to be at the start of the race um, waiting for the gun to go off. So we can draw this line, the upper bound of the half marathon race, we can draw this line from 9.30 at the start line to kind of about 10.30. And they're going to run the fastest, so they're going to be the first to arrive at the University Park and they're going to be first to arrive at the finish line. Then it's going to take probably about 20 minutes, half an hour for all of those kind of 6,000 odd runners to pass through the start line because there's so many of them. And so the last person to cross the start line is going to cross it maybe kind of 20, 30 minutes later. And maybe they're going to be a really slow runner. Maybe it's going to take them two, two and a half hours to finish the race. So they allow us to draw this other line, the bottom bound. This essentially constructs a shape that contains all of the runners who took part in the marathon. So we can draw lots of trajectories, lots of individual runner stories on our graph. Now what we can start to do is think about where the coverage that we've collected fits onto this graph. So for example, if we had somebody standing on the University Park, standing still, they'll record for a certain period of time, but they won't move. So we can draw a video as a line going down or a block going down, where the path of a runner intersects this line going down that we've drawn, basically means that somebody is in the field of view of the video as we've captured it. And as we have lots of people standing around University Park, we can draw lots of these boxes going down to kind of represent the coverage that we've got. Typically, nobody wanted to kind of stand on Boots campus because kind of it's an industrial state, it's not near people's houses, so it's not an obvious place for people to go and spectate. The university, however, is it's open. It was a nice sunny day. It's a nice kind of park area where people might want to go and spend a morning. So a lot of our spectators went and hung around at the university park. So we have lots and lots of coverage. And if we plot all of the coverage that we've taken on this graph, we can see that between about kind of eight and a half miles and ten and a half miles, that kind of period of the race through University Park, we have about 90% coverage of the race as it passes through. Technically, we have that much coverage. Um, so our spectators around University Park are essentially acting like a video gateway through which runners are passing and hopefully we'll be able to catch a glimpse of them. Other bits of coverage, we have another bit of dense coverage as the race leaves the University Park. We've got quite a lot of the finish line, some of our spectators hung around the start line and the finish line because the race starts and finishes in the same place. What we can also do is, is now start to add our tags to this data. So if you recall, we had our spectators adding information to this video footage by keying in runner numbers. What that allows us to do is put points on our graph where we know that we've definitely seen one of our runners. So if we've seen runner one, two, three within this video, we can mark it on our graph. And in another video, we can say we've seen runner one, two, three, and we can begin to kind of connect these lines together. So we've got this line that goes from their official start time through where we've spotted them to their official finish time. So we can draw this quite 
accurate trajectory of, of where we've seen this, these people. And what we can also do is look where their line intersects a video where they haven't been explicitly tagged, because it's quite a challenge for the spectators to tag every single runner who passes by, especially when it's really crowded. But by drawing this line, we can guess that a runner might actually be in this video because their line intersects a video that they haven't been seen in. What we can do with this is, is basically pull out a collection of video fragments, some of which we know the runner is explicitly in because they've been seen and tagged and somewhat that we think they might be in. So we can begin to pull out kind of these short video stories. And actually what we want to do now is um, think about again how we can use crowdsourcing and human computation um, and allow uh, open this collection of video up to allow people to help us identify people in these videos that they're implicated in. If we know that you're here to watch your uncle, we might say, if you go to this bit of the course, you'll be able to see your uncle because he's going to turn up in about 10 minutes because he's been tagged 10 minutes ago. Uh, as it sounds right now, only Apple can, can kind of make changes to iTunes. And therefore, we leave all of the users of iTunes without help.